Hello, I'm Grant from Makers Vlog and today I'm going to be talking about amateur radio. So as some of you may know, I am an amateur radio operator and I, I quite enjoy it. I quite enjoy the kit building aspect of it and all that good stuff. But um, I've, I've never really went through what I have and some people find that interesting. Um, so I'm going to go through what kit I have and various bits and pieces like that. Um, amateur radio is, is famously quite an expensive hobby, generally speaking. Um, and if you couldn't do it cheaply, I, I wouldn't be doing it. Um, it. It can be very expensive, but I, I mean, if you've seen this channel, if I can avoid it, I will. Um, so everything I've got is usually kit built and QRP. Now what QRP means is low power, but low power isn't an issue as long as you've got everything else right now it might sound counterintuitive but if say you don't have space to put up a good antenna and you have to use what's called a compromise antenna then you usually need more power to try and break through that um but if you've got the ability to set up something that's that's a bit more um efficient and you don't need a lot of space depend on the uh um on the, on the frequency that you're wanting to use so yeah i haven't had an issue with it but um, yes, let's uh, let's uh, move the camera down and uh, we'll look through what we've got. So hopefully you can see that okay. Um, apologies if there's a, a bit of uh, issues with this. This is my uh, new recording setup, so we'll see how it goes. Um, first kit I bought was this. And this is a QCX, and this one's for the 40 meter band, which is about seven megahertz frequency. Um, it's about, 40 beer tokens give or take depending on where you are and it is really really good radio it um, it doesn't come with the uh, this case I, I bought this separate to um to try and enclose it um i made a bit of a, a bit of a bollocks with it and it's it's not quite right it's, it fulfills the purpose but it's not fantastic so uh, i'll maybe i don't know make a new case for that it's at a later point but very good radio. It's uh, the only drawback that puts a lot of people off of this is that it is CW only, which is Morse code. But if you're doing QRP and a lot of kits that you can get and buy and build, a lot of them are, are, are going to be Morse code only. Um, I'm in the process of learning Morse code. Um, I have made a few contacts on this using a computer. You can use a computer to, to uh, send and translate the Morse code. Yeah, I mean, some purists say that that's wrong, but yeah, I've got a few contacts out of it. Um, so I'm in the process of learning Morse code. It's not that difficult. It's just like learning another language, but easier once you know the alphabet, you know the language. Um, so getting through that, that's good. Uh, this is uh, five watts with, uh, I think, about 16 volts input. Um, I usually run it with 12, so I'm probably only getting about three watts out of it, but still, that's for Morse code, that's plenty to, to get out and uh, be heard all the way around the world. So that was the first radio that uh, I uh, I ever got. Um, the next thing that I got, as you might know if you're doing Morse code paddles, can be expensive. So the next kit I got, I, I think I had a video of me building part of this at least, possibly. Um, I know I live streamed a, a few bits of that being built. Um, but this is a, a Morse code paddle, so on that side you get your DAS, that side you get your DITs, and it manages the, um, or well, this this doesn't manage the, the timings for you. Uh, it, this has an inbuilt gear, which um, does the uh, spacing for the, the DITs and DAS for you. Um, if you don't have that, if you're using a, uh, uh, say, a Pixie kit, or uh, I think a Rock mic doesn't have um, a gear into it, you can get one of these. Uh, uh, QRP guys I believe yeah QRP guys uh, mini Keir and all it does is it, is it manages the uh, the dits and das for you the, the timing and spacing between them um, it can also do pre-recorded messages so a lot of people pre-record their CQ call so which is a, a general call to anyone that you want to talk um, you generally can be sending that quite a lot so some people record them um, into the Keir the, the inbuilt Keir and a lot of radios has this functionality as well um, they program that in, then you can hit a button and it will then send out a CQ until you tell it to stop, essentially. So, handy bit of kit. Um, this, very good for portable operations. This is my only paddle at the minute and it works quite well, but um, yeah, potentially upgrade to something like a Kent, but they get expensive. They're the guts of £100, whereas this was um, 20 
and you had to build it. Bit fiddly to build, but not impossible. Um, oh, and this was uh, this was about ten beer tokens, fifteen I think. They have a version two, and I would I would probably say go for the version two because it it takes um, it has an inbuilt coin cell battery that um, then powers it. Whereas this you have to power it with a twelve volt, or sorry, a nine volt um, input. I use a, a one of these D batteries. Um, I think the, the only benefit really of having this, they still sell this, uh, and, and I bought this even though they had the, the version 2 I didn't see the benefit um, at the time. But I think the main benefit of this one is that if you have a low power system, so say I was running this off 9 volts, and uh, you, you might even be able to run this off 12 volts, I'm not sure. But if you had a whole system um, contained, but the, the radio didn't have a key, and you wanted to have this you know, enclosed in the case, you could obviously wire it up to its to the same power and just have the one power input but the, the way that i run it, it each thing has its own part separate power so yeah for me uh, the the v2 the version 2 of this with the inbuilt battery would be would have been a better option next thing uh, important bit of kit sometimes is a tuner uh, tuners can get very expensive um, this one again is a kit qrp guys i'm not sponsored by them in any way shape or form they just make a lot of good kits um, and this is a manual uh, tuner, 40 meters to 10 meters tuner. And uh, I think this was about 20, 30 beer tokens, give or take. Um, very good, very easy to use. Uh, it'll take a balanced line, which is good. So if you're using ladder line or something like that, very handy. Not all tuners have that, depending on what you buy. Um, yeah, very easy to build. There's not a lot of components. The, the only awkward thing is the uh, transformer, the toroid here that needs wound. But it's not... It's not difficult. Um, if, if you can count, you can wind a toroid. Um, so there's not much actually needed in that. And the, the instructions that these guys give are absolutely fantastic. Um, all of their stuff, so this is QRP guys as well and that, um, all of their stuff has like a difficulty rating built in. And it tells you how easy or hard it is, um, which is quite nice. Uh, I can't remember what this was rated. I think this was rated a medium. That one was rated quite difficult just because um, it's a bit fiddly, but essential bit of kit and uh, it very very easy to use. Now, if you're doing QRP, it is recommended really not to use a tuner because there's going to be power wasted in here trying to match the antenna to whatever frequency you're on. Um, but I've used it; it's worked fine. Um, but yes, yeah, so if you can use a resonant antenna, an antenna that works on the frequency you're using, then go for that. You don't necessarily need this. Uh, just while we're on antenna tuners, if you've seen uh, the other video I put out a while ago, you'll know this is an upcoming video. Um, this was about, I think about the same price as this one, about 30 beer tokens, give or take. And it's an automatic tuning kit. A lot of SMD components, so I wouldn't recommend this as a, as a beginner kit in any stretch of the imagination. But it isn't difficult, a lot of people are put off by SMD components. Um, you shouldn't be, it, they're easy enough, just a bit of patience. And good eyesight or a good magnifying glass and you're fine there's no issues uh, important for testing and if you're practicing a dummy load um, this is very very cheap and nasty this is just a little uh, BNC meal connector with uh, two power poles and then just a couple of wires going to a 25 watt 50 ohm resistor and that's it and that'll dissipate any RF that I, um, I put out on the radio um, I use this a lot at the minute for practicing Morse because the, the tone on that radio um, that I will show you in a second is quite nice. And it's a bit louder than the uh, the Keir uh, there. It's a bit louder than that because we do all these uh, Morse code lessons over Zoom. And it's easier for them to hear what I'm sending. But dummy load is definitely, uh, definitely an essential bit of kit. And I mean, I think I picked this up at a, uh, a ham fest thing, amateur radio outdoor event um, for like 50p and that uh, resistor got off eBay for a couple of beer tokens it's very cheap all right the big one now if everything I've showed you so far is Morse code related mostly apart from that obviously that doesn't matter what mode you throw into it um, and you can do if you're just if you're happy enough with learning Morse code or if you're going to plumb it into a computer to use then that's that's all, all you need is that and that I would recommend a tuner, but you don't need it. Um, and that is under, you know, 50 beer tokens, maybe just over for, for those. If you want to do voice, then you will need a radio that can do voice, obviously. 
um, and for that you're going to need to spend 100 plus quid ish even for a cheap one and for that there is this this is a, a micro bit x uh, sorry my camera can't really get that in focus very well but this is a qrp all band radio that does voice and um cw well uh, ssb and cw and it is about 150 beer tokens for the kit um, and this is a kit but there is not a lot to this um, you get a board that's got all the SMD components pre-soldered so you don't need to do that all you need to do effectively is is put it into the case and you can buy it with or without the case I, I went for the case just because it was a bit nicer it's got a nice um, touch screen on it for selecting um, your band and CW and all that and great wee radio really really good feature wise that uh, the wee qcx actually has more features than this however this does voice which is the the key thing for it for a cheap radio that does all bands that can do voice uh you you can't beat it um also has a a nice loud speaker on it um so if you're needing voice this you know you're, you're going to need to spend about 150 uh, beer tokens but this one uh, with the the case and everything else it does come with a, a microphone for you which i mean is cheap and cheerful but it works um so yeah that's if, if you're happy enough with cw you can do this very very cheap but uh, if you want voice you need to spend that bit more but it can still be a lot cheaper i mean a an entry level non-kit radio is 300 plus pounds um so um, price comparison wise th there's no contest these are really really good and you can get um, amplifiers so if you are really keen on going above QRP and getting uh, more power out of it you can get amplifiers online you can get amplifier kits um, that are fairly cheap um, I have one here this is a uh, what is this I guess this is meant to be a 70 watt or 50 watt um, amplifier now the downside with this this was i mean under five beer tokens i think for the kit came from china there was no instructions with this this is the second one i've had um and trying to find instructions that, that make sense online were painful so you, you can buy these pre-built though i've seen these on ebay pre-built ready to go so you could use that as well um but i have yet to get one of these working okay and no radio is complete without an antenna and I'm only going to show you half of this, but it does not need to be fancy or expensive. This is speaker wire. It's all it is, just speaker wire. This one is made for um, the 20 meter band, which is a, a common band. Um, and that's it. It's a length of speaker wire. This is uh, for the 20 meter band. So this is five meters in length. And there's two legs. And I put this into one of these, which makes it into a dipole. And do a bit of coax into the radio. And it's done. Easy as that. And so very, very good antenna, but I also have another one that I have made, which looks a little bit neater. Uh, I say a little bit neater and bring it in and look at it. And actually it does not look any neater at all. But um, this is, well, it's meant to be a doublet antenna. So this is one leg of it, the other leg's down there. And what you do is you feed this into what's called balanced, uh, balanced feeder, ladder line, some people call it. Um, and it's meant to be able to be uh, put into this as I said it connects onto these lugs and it, it's meant to be quite broad in what frequencies it can tune to and what frequencies it works on I have not got this working yet it is obviously something I am doing wrong I've seen a couple of things online uh, some people said that you need to have this length of wire cut to the uh, lowest frequency that you want to use so in my case this is a 40 meter band and others saying that it needs to be not resonant on any particular frequency. This one is cut to 40 meters and I can get it to tune on 40 meters and not much else. I, I think I got it on 30 and um, I managed to get it to tune okay. So actually if any of you have any ideas about you know how to get this working let me know um, because it would be very handy to be able to, to just string out one antenna than having to swap it out each time. But um, yeah, let me know on that one. Um, I, I'm thinking maybe the other articles that I read were right and that you need to have it not resonant on any particular antenna. But that's it. That's all my radio kit. And it's not a lot and it was very inexpensive. I mean, all in all, radio aside, under 100 quid.
So that's it. Um, that's that's all my kit. Um, I'm going to do another wee video uh, shortly um, on just uh, powering it. How I, I power a lot of my electronics. I use batteries a lot um, uh, because I quite like using solar panel or sorry solar power to power most things. If you've seen the the other video on the solar powered car, you'll you'll know that. Um, so I quite like batteries and various methods of storing that. And some new ones arrived today. It's the uh, 18650 cells, um, which are lithium ion, which are huge capacity in comparison to some of the other stuff that I've got. So we'll see how well that goes. Um, but yeah, so if you'd like to subscribe, all that good stuff. If you have any questions, anything that you want to see, you know, put it down below and uh, let me know. Also, if, uh, if you know how I might get this feckin' thing, the doublet antenna working right or anything, any hints and tips, uh, let me know on that one as well, please. But yeah, see you later.